throughout his life, the one thing that meant most to Jesus was people. He sacrificed everything to lead them to his Father and to love them no matter what. Jesus loved everyone. That was what made him so different and so necessary to our lives. I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Through many years of ministry, we've discovered that there's no greater joy than loving and caring for God's people. That means you, no matter your denomination, race, or walk of life. Your dreams and desires are important to God, and that makes them important to us. We've dedicated our lives to bringing the compassion of Jesus to everyone. By building faith in God through the teaching and preaching of His Word, Lakewood helps those who have been overcome to be overcomers. We're interested in God's very best for you. So please, just as you are, join the people of Lakewood for the next hour as we open God's Word together. At Lakewood Church, we're here for you. All right, let's hold up our Bibles and let's make our confession. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's open our Bibles to Daniel chapter 9 and Revelation chapter 8. We're preaching during these days on the subject of prayer. And we're calling this year the year of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm telling you, nothing is impossible with the Holy Ghost moving in our midst. And thank God for the Holy Ghost, but thank God for the Holy Ghost in fire. The fire burns up the chaff. And the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn up adultery, fornication, alternate lifestyles, lying, stealing, uh, husbands abusing wives and, and incest in the home and, and every other thing. The Holy Ghost will burn that out of a person. God wants a, person, uh, a church without spot and without wrinkle. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, you know, we've been, uh, we've been mentioning Ephesians chapter 6, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. Therefore, because you have supernatural enemies, you need supernatural power. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Then the Bible says, stand therefore, have your loins girt about with truth, have on the breastplate of righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray. Everybody shout, pray, three times. Pray, pray, pray. Oh, I tell you, folks, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to know. It's wonderful to know that God is a prayer answering God. And the Bible says, who hath known the mind of the Lord to instruct him? Or who has discussed the things of God? Who does not know that he who moves God's hands moves the hands that move the world? When we pray, we move God's hands. If we don't pray, he doesn't move. So God, it seems someone says that God will do nothing except in answer to prayer. God said, I sought for a man. I looked for a man or a woman to make up the heads. 
that could stand in the hedge, but I found none, so God couldn't do anything. God wants a church that will pray. Or Jeremiah said, call unto me. God said, call unto me, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was in, the, in jail. Are you in jail today? Are you in prison today? Are you in some kind of bondage today? Are you uh, bound down today? God said to Jeremiah in the middle of that jail, in prison, he said, Jeremiah, in all of your trouble, call unto me. I challenge you, call unto me, and I will answer you. And I'll not only answer you, I'll show you. Revelation knowledge comes when we pray. Oh, I challenge the television audience, if, you're, if you belong to Jesus, pray. If you know God, pray. God can change things if you pray. He said, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. We are calling this church to prayer. We're asking everybody to have a prayer meeting in the home with somebody. One, two, three, four, five. How many you can get at least once a, a week? We want 1,000 homes praying every week. Our staff prays the first hour of where they, when they come to work, laying their hands on the cards and the letters and the commitments and the needs and the telephone calls. We believe in prayer. God is alive. I said God is alive. I want you to notice something know about prayer here in Daniel chapter 9. It's very unusual. Look at it. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books. He read the Bible, the Jer book of Jeremiah. I understood by the books the number of years which were in the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah, came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes, and I prayed. Now look up here just a minute. He read in the Bible where God said that, the, that Jerusalem would be, uh, would be conquered for 70 years, and the 70 years was up. And he, he said, look what I found here. God said that he's going to deliver Jerusalem after 70 years. He found that in the book of Jeremiah. But it didn't just automatically happen. Somebody had to pray. Now just think about that. What if, Jer what if uh, uh, Daniel had not prayed? When I found out God's will, it was God's will for that city to be free, I set myself with fasting and prayer to seek God's face to bring to pass what he had said should happen. Well, you know, God said a lot about you. He said, you know, he wants you saved. Well, call unto me, and I'll answer you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The God wants you well and healed, but you've got to ask. You have not because you ask not. You see the will of God about prosperity in the Bible, but you can stay poor. You've got to call. You've got to see God's will revealed in the Word of God and then set yourself to say, God, you said it, now do it. I bring words unto you, Father. I bring them, Lord. Oh, God gets happy when his children come in. Now, I want you to look at a scripture in uh, Revelation chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And I saw seven angels which stood before the throne of God, seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Now stop right there just a minute. We'll read. Look up here just a minute. Notice when we pray on earth, our prayers reach heaven and they go right up to the golden altar the least person in this building the most humble the most those who feel the most unworthy you who feel like God will not answer prayer listen when you call on planet earth planet heaven hears it says the prayers of the saints were presented on the golden altar. I want you to say, God hears my prayers. God hears my prayers. Say it again. God hears my prayers. 
You television audience, say it with us, say it again. See, when they, when, they, when they brought the golden censer and the golden altar and the incense, they mixed it with the prayers of God's people. How did those prayers get up there? Somebody prayed down here on earth. And God had angels come with incense and that beautiful, wonderful incense. You know, Tony and I went out to a little place out here called Old Spring yesterday and, and we walked in a little shop and man, I said, look, Tony, smell this. My, my, what is in here? And it was some kind of a, uh, a potpourri, potpourri shop. And I'm telling you, it smelled wonderful. But that's nothing to compare to what it smells like when they offer incense on the golden altar before our Heavenly Father and our prayers go up into His presence. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with what? What, what, what fill it with what? Fire. fire. That's what we need, a Holy Ghost and fire. Fill it with fire off of the altar and cast it into the what? Earth. Into the where? Earth. Shout it out loud. Earth. Into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. I want you to notice the prayers that reach heaven touch earth. He took that gold, he took that fire and cast it into the earth. That's what we need. We need, to, we need to go and present ourselves before God and pray until earth feels the lightnings, the voices, the thunderings, and the earthquakes. Oh, glory to God. There were thunderings, and there were lightnings, and an earthquake. The point is that the prayers that reach God affect what happens on the earth. And he can shake your husband until he wants to get saved. Amen. He can shake your child that's on drugs until he shakes the drugs out of him. Amen. He can shake those prison walls until you get out and you're a free man to preach the gospel. Amen. Give our, our prisoners that watch a good amen. Now flip back to Revelation chapter 5. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the what? Prayers of the saints. Our, our prayers are preserved before God. And if you won't give up and think that God didn't hear you, your prayer, the answer, is on the way. Everybody shout, my answer is on the way. Say it again. See, the prayer is like incense before God. It's there. He's dispatched the, the, the angels of God with the answer. They're on the way. The, that's the reason the Bible said, let us hold fast the confession of our faith. Let's don't lose faith in God. Hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Amen. Hold fast to what you already have. Hold fast to your words of confession. Now notice the prayers of the saints. Verse 9. And they sang, they sung a new song, saying, Worthy, thou art worthy to take the book, talking about Jesus, to open the seals thereof, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by the blood, by your blood out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation. Now look up here just a minute. Those prayers produce results in every people, every tongue, every kindred, and every nation. That's how they got to heaven, by the prayers of those people. I want to tell you, when we pray here, God moves in Africa. When we pray here, God moves in India. When we pray here, God moves all over the world. We bless his work all over the world, and we're going to see people in heaven out, out of every tongue, every kindred, every language, every, every nation. We're going to see them all, thank God. But they all come because somebody prayed. Somebody prayed. I said, somebody pray. Standing in the gap. Standing in the gap. 
I think about Abraham. When those, the angels came and said, we're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, Lot was down there. His nephew was down there with his wife and his children. And Abram didn't want Lot to be destroyed with all of those people. But the angel said, we're on our way to destroy that terrible city called Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be destroyed. And Abram stood before the Lord. Now that's what prayer is. Standing before God. There's a city that's about to be destroyed and there's a family he wants out of there before the destruction comes. The city will be destroyed, but that, they don't have to die in it. This world is dying to go to hell, but you don't have to go with them. You don't have to go with them. You don't have to stay in that crowd. The Bible says he has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Thank God there's power to deliver. I don't care how, how much of a drunkard you are, an alcoholic you are. I don't care how much of a, a, a drug addict you are or how you may be addicted to promiscuity and adultery and fornication. Our God he is able to deliver you. He is able to deliver you. All you have to do is to make a wholehearted sub submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So here, Sodom is going to be destroyed. Lot and his family is in there. Now, Abram, Abram stands before God and he pleads his case. He pleads his case. He prays. He intercedes. That's what we're talking about. Who else is going to pray if we don't pray? Oh, somebody prayed for me. Oh, my. I've often thought when I came home from that nightclub, a dropout of high school, and I went back to high school after I got saved. I went on to college seminary, but I was a dropout of high school. I stopped in my last half of my senior year, dropout. Went to selling popcorn in the ISIS Theater in North, in, in North Fort Worth, Texas. And I was living in the world. And this night, I was coming home from a dance hall, alone, walking across the city of Fort Worth in the moonlight. Now, why should I suddenly think about God? Why should I suddenly think about where am I going when I die? Why should I suddenly begin to think about time and eternity and my eternal destiny? Somebody prayed. I said, somebody prayed. I said, somebody prayed. Oh, thank God. Their prayers were offered on the golden incense of God. And there came out of heaven the voices of voice of God. And God began to talk to me. And as a result of that, I got saved. I got born again many years ago. And God called me to preach. Hallelujah. And I'm still preaching. And I'm not near through yet. Hallelujah. What am I saying? I'm saying somebody pray. Did you know that some people don't have anybody praying for them? Some people don't have anybody in the world praying for them. Nobody cares. David cried, no man cared for my soul. Oh, yes, we care for the body and we try to uh, massage it and exercise it and, and we care for it and in a way we feed it right. We care for the mind. We send people to institutions to educate them. We care for the body. We care for the mind. But David said, what about the eternal part of me? That part that's going to die and live forever and forever. That part that's on its way to hell. He said, no man cared for my soul. Oh, let's care about the souls of men that are lost and on their way to hell. God said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Listen. There are multitudes that do not have anybody to pray for them. You know, we have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. We pray in tongues. And you can pray in tongues and God can zero in on somebody on the other part of the world. And you can intercede for them according to the will of God. Thank God for prayer in other languages. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, over there in Romans 8, it says, but the Spirit himself helpeth our infirmities. He helps our infirmities. 
For we not, know not what to pray for as we ought. Now, we know what to pray for sometimes, but we don't, don't know how to pray for it. And sometimes we don't know what to pray for. Well, we can give ourselves over to God and say, God, there's someone that's sick. There's somebody out there lost. There's somebody that needs you. Nobody's praying for them. Just use my spirit and, and your spirit and my spirit to pray for them, to stand before you just like Abraham stood before the Lord. And Abraham said to God, he said, w w w you're going to destroy the righteous with the, with the unrighteous? Will not the judge of all the earth do right? See, God, he talked to God. And he said, Lord, if there's 10, 50 righteous people, is that what he started with? Uh, would you destroy the, they, they said, well, if you can find that many. He said, well, if they, they, they'd be 10, you know. He said, no, I won't destroy it if there are 10 righteous people in there. But he didn't go on down and say one or two or three. He just stopped. God said, I won't destroy it if there are 10 righteous people there. But there were 10. Just think about a city that didn't have 10 people who love God. Thank God there's hope for Houston because there's multitudes, thousands of people who love God. And we want the people to know our confession is the devil cannot have Houston, Texas. I can't hear you. The devil can't have Houston. And the devil can't have your city, wherever you are, wherever this tapes go. You, you, can, you can stand your ground. Stand your ground. And, and Abram, Abram stood his ground. And, and, and he prayed until God sent an angel down there and pulled Lot out of that city. That's prayer. That's prayer. Abram prayed until God sent an angel to pull Lot out of that city and got him out. I'll tell you, we can pray until God will send an angel to get a hold of your relative. Amen. amen. How many of you believe there are demons loose in the world? Shout amen. amen. Well, if there are demons loose, how many of you know there's some angels loose too? Amen. amen. And there are helpers. There are helpers. Oh, I think about the great things that God did by prayer. Listen, Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, wonderful things about prayer. In that day you shall ask me nothing. You won't pray to me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever, everybody shout whatsoever. whatsoever. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Now listen, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask that you might receive that your joy may be full. What is God's dream? He wants your joy to be full. What would it take to make your joy full? God wants to give it to you, as long as it's in line with his word. God wants your joy to be full. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You mean, Brother Osteen, that God would hear my prayer for a car or for a husband that's lost or for a son on drugs or for a wife that's wavered or, or, or some sickness in my... God will hear your cry. And he'll fix it to where you will be so happy your joy will be full. That's what prayer does. He wants your joy full. And we're believing as we give ourselves to prayer in this, in this church. And as you give yourself to prayer out there, calling upon God, I believe God will fill up, fill up our joy cup until it's running over. My cup runneth over. Everybody say, my cup runneth over. <laughs> now, he said, ask that you might receive. He didn't say, ask that you might not get it. He said, ask that you might receive. That your joy, everybody shout, my joy. My joy. My joy. Your joy shall be what? Full. Shall be full. You know, the greatest joy in the world is not the joy of having possessions or even having physical healing. The greatest joy in the world is to know that you are right with God, that your sins are forgiven, and that you're washed in the blood of Jesus. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Put your hand upon your heart. You can pass out of darkness in the light, out of, out of death in the life by simply making Jesus the Lord of your life. Pray this prayer, oh God. Oh God, I, I know that I need you. I know I'm a sinner, and I know without Jesus I'm lost. 
But Jesus, I want you to come into my heart and I want you to save me. Right now, I make you the Lord of my life. 